Myanmar's ousted leader, Aung San Suu Kyi, has been charged with violating the country's Official Secrets Act. The new allegation was only just revealed by her lawyer. An earlier claim of treason could see her barred from political office for life. At the same time, protests continue as protesters mark two months since the February coup. Singing and chanting slogans, protesters turn out in Yangon to mark two months since the military coup in February. They continue to act in defiance of the military, even after hundreds of protesters have been killed. Myanmar's army has announced a month-long nationwide ceasefire in a move they hope will ease weeks of violence across the country. They even want to hold peace talks with armed ethnic groups, which are supporting anti-coup protesters. However, the army is saying it will still take action if security is threatened. In a symbolic move, a shadow government made up of ousted civilian administration has declared the 2008 constitution void, replacing it with an interim charter. Demonstrators responded by burning copies of the army's constitution, which endorsed power sharing. With violence growing, there are fears it could spark a full-fledged civil war. More than 530 people have already been killed. The United Nations warns the situation would only worsen and a bloodbath is imminent. Leon Waikit joins us now. Waikit, Aung San Suu Kyi's court appearance today saw another allegation made public. Yes, yeah, Stephen, I must say that candidly people are describing Ms. Suu Kyi's court appearances as Myanmar's best kept secrets. For one, we don't know where she's currently put under house arrest. And two, even her lawyers are always confused with details of a court appearance. I mean, for the most part of today, media have been saying that Ms. Aung San Suu Kyi, who appeared in court, was not charged with any offences. But then, as you mentioned, uh, uh, Steve, earlier, um, reports came in saying that Ms. Suu Kyi had actually been charged with violating the country's uh, Official Secrets Act last week and his chief and her chief lawyer had only found that out two days ago. Uh, today, we were expecting Ms. Suu Kyi to also be charged with corruption because the army had been building a case against her. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. And we've also been seeing documents being circulating online in the last few days uh, alleging that Ms. Suu Kyi could also be charged with high treason, which is a charge that could see the death penalty. However, that is uh, what we've been seeing online so far. We've been trying to also get in touch with Ms. Suu lawyer to, uh, to verify uh, facts, but we've also not been able to get in touch with them, understandably, because they have been uh, said to be on the move, as well as not picking up phone, uh, phone numbers that are unfamiliar to them. And why could, is the move by ousted lawmakers to abolish the 2008 constitution courting trouble? Well, Steve, that depends on whom you ask. If you ask the army, that's definitely courting trouble. For one, they've already said that the ousted lawmaker group, CRPH, is an unlawful association. Some of the members have been charged with treason and people have been warned against working with them. Of course, if you ask the pro-democracy camp, that's great news. Many people say that they are heartened to see that the 2008 constitution being abolished. The ousted lawmakers have also come up with an interim uh, charter uh, charting the country's political roadmap. This is likely to be very symbolic because uh, they are still ruling in hiding after all. Um, but it does send a strong message to the people of Myanmar. The ousted lawmakers are telling the people of Myanmar that despite the coup, the pace and momentum and push for democracy is still ongoing. And one last question for you before we let you go. Has international pressure had any impact so far? Not at all. The current situation is that Lethal violence is still being made against civilians, including some 20 to 30 children being killed so far. The current situation is that the international actors have been slamming, have been accused, uh, 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 condemning the violence, asking Myanmar army to stop killing. They've, they have um, slapped sanctions on army officials as well as army conglomerates. ASEAN has also been making similar calls. ASEAN has also been trying to engage with the Myanmar army, but so far... Nothing has changed. The violence is still ongoing. But I must point out that perhaps it is not the international actors that have a say in this, but the domestic parties that are inside Myanmar. Observers and I have been having many long conversations about situations in Myanmar. And if you recall, recently there was a day of a silent strike where 
almost everyone stayed at home across Myanmar. The streets were empty, shops were not open. And on that day, the death toll was very, very low. So perhaps the real people, the real party that has the power to change things lies within Myanmar, not outside. Anyway, thanks for getting us up to speed. Uh, Leong Waikit there with that latest from Myanmar. Britain has announced fresh sanctions against a Myanmar conglomerate because of close links to the military. The UK believes that the situation in the country has reached a new low with the killing of innocent people. Ollie Barrett joins us live now for more. Ollie, how impactful will this decision be? Well, the UK does believe that levelling sanctions against the MEC can make a difference. The Foreign Office uh, statement saying that it will prohibit funds and economic resources being made available to any subsidiaries owned or controlled by MEC. And it says the designation of MEC is in response to credible evidence that it has contributed funds to support the Myanmar military. And we've also had some words from Dominic Raab, the UK Foreign Secretary, on this move as well, uh, saying that this is targeting one of the military's key funding streams, and he says will impose a further cost on them for their violations of human rights. So the UK certainly believes that this is one area that it can put further pressure on uh, the military in Myanmar uh, with regards to targeting the MEC, which it believes uh, is a key funding stream for the military. And Ollie, is there a possibility that we might see even more sanctions like this by the UK? Absolutely, there is. The UK is being very clear about that and indeed is taking extra measures at the same time as imposing these sanctions on uh, MEC. Extra funding, half a million pounds, the UK says, going into the so-called independent investigative mechanism for Myanmar, which is that UK backed, uh, United Nations backed, excuse me, mechanism, which is designed to help gather evidence inside Myanmar around allegations of human rights abuses, things like collecting user-generated video for what the UK describes as the possible future use in criminal proceedings. But going back to that idea of exactly how much impact, if any, all of this is having. I spoke to the UK's Minister for Asia, Nigel Adams, in a, an exclusive interview for CNA back in March, and I put this very question to him. Could he give me any evidence that the sanctions already imposed by the United Kingdom were actually having any effect? He could not do so. He could only say that he hoped in future that the actions the UK were taking would be impactful. He pointed to playing up the UK's leading role internationally in trying to lead a coordinated response to what's happening in Myanmar. But he couldn't go as far as saying that there was any sign so far that it's actually having an effect. Thank you for keeping on top of these developments for us, Ollie. Ollie Barrett there in London.